Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we're going to be discussing a new piece of literature that is apparently becoming bundled with certain spindle motor kits and I wanted to discuss this first uh, as I haven't seen it discussed and it's kind of frightening. So let's go over it real quick. Apparently this was bundled on a potential client spindle where it states on the spindle motor air plug 123 connection uh, to the inverter UVW this means 1 equals U, 2 equals V, 3 equals W. Now many of us should all know that all spindles require three phase power. Uh, that means that each lead you see here, one, two, three, whatever color your leads are, you're going to see that in the second portion of this video because uh, I'm going to do a practical application where you'll actually see what I'm talking about. You'll see the VFD and everything and we can cover that. Uh, Whatever is allocated, once again, with a number associated with a colored lead, each individual lead is providing a leg of power to provide three phase. And it says here, four is blank, meaning the fourth terminal on your connector is blank. Uh, can't connection to ground, otherwise the spindle motor would be damaged uh, because your metal machine body have been connection to ground. Now we know the English here is bad. We know what they're trying to say. And it says here the motor can't be used for heavy metal. Um, once again, what we need to look at here is logic. Okay, If you connect the ground, regardless of if the units um, actually connected internally to a ground, meaning the spindle itself's connector that's mounted within the spindles, number four, pin is connected to the body and you connect the ground from your spindles power cable run to your VFD to the ground on the VFD they're claiming that you will damage your spindle this is not possible gentlemen and ladies whoever's watching this is simply not possible okay uh, I have never heard of this I've never seen this I don't know why this would be written um, it was interesting, though, the potential client then went back, spoke to the company after I addressed this with them, and he addressed it with them, and they said, oh, no, this is just precautionary, this, that, and the other thing, and no, it's not precautionary, it's ridiculous, and the bottom line is you're not going to cause a ground loop by using the ground on the VFD because every ground on that VFD's terminal that's once again supplying a ground signal to your actual spindle is going to be shared with the VFD. They're all using the same ground, guys. You're not using a different ground. This is the way you are properly to connect this unit. There is no deviation in this, okay? I wanted to cover this because, again, hopefully this, this will save many of you. This video I'm making as short and as sweet as possible, and now I'm covering in the next portion a DS flexion cable I built and how you're going to connect it to a VFD so there's no more questions I've covered it a million times and hopefully it reaches the right novice guy looking for this information stay tuned okay guys in this portion of the video we're looking at practical application here I've got an HY 2.2 K VFD I've got a pre-made DS flexion 20 foot spindle cable assembled with a large white HY connector. Many of you have seen this connector. It is utilized on both a 1.5 kilowatt and 2.2 kilowatt uh, spindle. Uh, my connectors are a little different in that they actually have the ground symbol. You can see it right there. Um, what I want to show you and discuss in practical application, you can see on our ring terminals here for our spindle cable, just fanning them out a little bit, you can see we've got white, red, and black. And then we have over here a yellow with green stripe and also a silicone lead, which is an extension of the shield drain that comes to this ring connector. So one ring connector actually has two leads coming to it. The remaining three, once again, white, red, black, these colors are arbitrary. Forget the colors. What you need to realize is every lead that you see here is providing a 110 volt leg to your spindle because it's three phase. Okay, so in conjunction, when this is connected to the VFD, and you see the VFD labeled UVW, UVW, repeating it, any one color that you see here can be connected to U, V, and W. And when I say any one color, that's white, red, or black, black, red, or white, red, white, or black, black, white, or red, it doesn't matter. Because guess what? They're all power leads. 
okay? What you have on this final lead, this is the most critical lead. I'll say it again. This is the most critical lead not to screw up. Very simple. The lead that actually has two leads coming into it, one ring connector, goes to terminal 9, where the actual ground symbol is. Now, why it actually has two leads going into it, once again, is from the connector's actual pin number four, which is the unit's ground, the connector's ground for your spindle, that's this yellow with green stripe lead. The one next to it, that's a silicone extension, and you can see it right here, that is extending the shield drain from your tin braided copper shielding as well as your mylar foil shielding on your double shielded cable. And once again, I stated a double shielded cable. You should not be using a single shielded cable with any VFD spindle application. It is not best practice. The odds of you not mitigating both forms of EMI are going to be massive and the potential for EMI interference is massive. So this video covers everything. If you watch this video, and hopefully many of my novices out there will watch this video, you cannot screw this up. I mean, it's right here in front of you. If you buy the cable from me, I get asked this a lot, are these cables pre-made? And you can see everything is done. As a matter of fact, I hope in the video she can pick up. There's a gold tint on these actual ring connectors, and you can see it if I shimmer them. And that gold tint that you see is because I'm using deoxic gold to actually protect and enhance these connectors. Okay, you're not familiar with deoxic gold, check it out. You're looking at an additional $10. Look at how small this vial is. NASA uses this. This is amazing stuff. Um, it saved my butt numerous times and it will save your system the long run as far as protection and enhancement. All of these connectors inside this cable also have protection with this. Okay. And covering, once again, this in detail, the only reason I'm really doing this, because I've answered this question millions of times, is because now China is releasing different paperwork from different vendors, just as you saw prior, where they're stating um, not to connect the two grounds from your spindle cable to the ground on the actual VFD. This is ridiculous, people. Ridiculous. Now, just to cover one other detail. Your power cable coming in to power the VFD, you have R, S, and T. You can use any three of these to actually connect your power cable. Now, if it's a single phase 220, you're going to use R and S or R and T or S and T. It doesn't matter because, again, it's single phase and 220 will have two legs of power. If you have three phase, you'll just connect R, S, and T in any arbitrary configuration. Once again, TSR, SRT, it does not matter. You have three-phase power, meaning each power leg will go to an individual terminal. That's it. This is how you connect these VFDs. Um, again, if you're looking for an assembled cable, like you see here, I've already covered how these cables are built. Um, with this cable, once again, you have UltraFlex. You're not going to get that with a double shielded cable on a standard double shielded cable. You can see that. Okay, 2.9 inch MBR rating. Um, this one's totally built. I'll put a link for it. Again, you can see double wall heat shrink that's been used. I've already got numerous videos of actually how I build this. I'll put links to that, um, um, links to this application as far in the video as well, so you can see the process of me assembling them. Um, but you can see it's got. It actually has one, one actual sheath of double wall, and then over that we put another sheath. This way we make this ultra rigid at the end where it actually connects, and we have our stress relief. Uh, we do use the proper blue Loctite on our screws for vibration, as we should. And then as this connector is finished, you've got your boot here where your integration, once again, with the ring connectors actually connect to the terminals. They are properly sized at four millimeters. And you can see here, the cable is properly finished off and you're all set to go. So again, this is the, I cannot make this more simple than this. If you still have questions on this, first suggestion is always go to your manufacturer in terms of uh, whether you bought directly from HY or if you bought from an online vendor online, contact them if you have any questions. This will solve 99.9% .9 of the questions as far as how to hook up these VFDs. And they're basically all the same, guys. I mean, these terminals all labeled the same. You can see UVW here. Very, very simple. Now, as far as programming, you can see this terminal block here and this terminal block here. That's a whole different realm. 
Every system may be slightly different. We have different preferences by end users. If you need basic programming, I suggest you contact the vendor you purchased it from. That is the proper procedure. And I unfortunately, I get a lot of questions where guys are like, hey, I didn't buy from you, but can you give me the programming? Uh, I will do it. But I'm going to tell you right now, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth because I should not be supporting someone else's equipment when I'm not being supported. And that's the right way to do business. So, again, what you see here and how I explain this is as simple as that. If you want, again, a proper double shielded cable used for tight cable chain installation, this is ultra flex cable ready to 10 million flex cycles. DS Flexion, again, you can look at the reviews on eBay. I'm not kidding you. This cable is amazing. Uh, it's taken me a long time to develop it, and the stuff is just awesome. And for these applications, this is a proper cable uh, to use in tighter cable chain installations, and you can see why here. Everything here is all set. So again, I hope this video has made things explicitly clear. You can see the ratings on the cable.